The Yorkshire Terrier is a bold and confident character, feisty in nature but also a loving companion for their owners. As one of the most popular toy dog breeds, the Yorkie has become a very sought after pup for its silky coat and devoted nature. In today's video we will be comparing this intriguing pup with the admired Havanese dog. We will be looking at their histories, appearance, temperaments and trainability, as well as their health. Welcome back to the Fenrir Yorkshire Terrier Show. It's great to have you here and if you're new, my name's Rachel and I'm the co-founder here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. This channel is here to help you raise wonderful pups of your own and become perfect puppy parents to offer your dog a wonderful, healthy and fulfilled life. So to make sure that you never miss a future video about our four-legged best friends, hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. So let's jump straight into today's video and find out which of these pups may be the best one for you. The Yorkshire Terrier and the Havanese dogs have extremely different histories. The Yorkie was bred from a group of terriers during the Industrial Revolution in England that Scottish workers brought with them when looking for work in factories, textile mills and coal mines. The main terrier brought to England by the Scottish workers was the Clydesdale Terrier, which was thought to have been bred with the English Black and Tan Toy Terrier, the Sky Terrier and the Waterside Terrier. They were bred as ratters and their role was to exterminate the rats and other rodents in factories, mills and mines to protect the workers. Due to their small size, they were perfect for getting into tight spaces where the rats would be hiding. Yorkies were also used as hunters' companions to scare wild animals from their dens. The father terrier of the breed was called Huddersfield Ben, who won many canine shows and was a very sought after stud dog. The pups that he produced were all very small dogs, around five pounds, which is the size that was preferred. So he was seen as the foundation of the Yorkshire Terrier breed. The Havanese dog has a very different history. Spanish settlers arrived in Cuba with their small companion dogs, which are known to be the ancestors of what is now the Bichon dog family. These dogs interbred and, due to being isolated from other dogs because of being on an island, they developed into the Havanese that we know today. By the 1800s, many aristocrat families in Cuba had the breed as a lap dog, and European travellers admired the breed and brought them back to Spain, France and England, causing them to become almost a fashion item in the mid-1800s. The Havanese is a small dog breed, but is bigger than the tiny Yorkshire Terrier. Havanese males and females stand between 8.5 and, and 11.5 and inches tall and weigh 7 to 13 pounds, whilst the Yorkshire Terrier usually stands 8 to 9 inches at the shoulder and should weigh no more than 7 pounds. This is the kennel called preferred height and weight, but the Yorkie can be very inconsistent in size. The Yorkshire Terrier has been admired for its long and silky coat and does need a lot of grooming to maintain the healthy looking straight coat. Yorkie puppies are born black, which develops into a blue and tan coat after a year old. Their coat is what made the Yorkie so incredibly popular over the years, alongside their tiny size. As from the back of their head to the end of their tail is a dark, shiny blue. Their head is a bright gold with lots of tan hairs throughout, and the hair that falls over their face has the same golden colour. Yorkies usually get lighter with age and hormonal changes, specifically females when they are in season. The Havanese has a very different look to the Yorkie with its thick and soft coat. Their hair is silky like the Yorkie but it's lighter and can be curly, wavy or straight. Their colouring comes in many different variations which are white, black, black and tan, sable, grey and a diverse range of other colours and unique markings. When the coat is kept longer, the Havanese needs daily brushing to prevent the hair tangling or causing irritation to the dog. The Havanese is a gentle natured dog which thrives on companionship with their owner. They need plenty of affection and tend to be like your little shadow wherever you go as they are known to get anxious when they are left on their own. They are intelligent little pups and love to entertain their human companions. Their temperament can differ from dog to dog due to it being affected by their hereditary training and socialisation. Socialisation is extremely important from a young age for all dogs, but the Havanese especially needs a large amount in order to be less wary of strangers, situations and other animals. On the other hand, Yorkshire Terriers have a very independent nature. Although they do love affection from their owners, they are not dependent on this. 
Even though they are tiny in size, they have very big personalities and their feisty terrier side makes them stand out from the crowd. They also need socialisation from a young age in order to make sure that you will have a friendly and confident pup. As with all dogs, these two breeds are prone to certain health conditions, which can seriously affect your decision. However, these health conditions may not affect your pup during their life, or may just happen in old age, but it's important to be aware of the risks, just to make sure that you can cope financially with vet bills. The Havanese can be prone to hip and elbow dysplasia, abnormally shorter limbs, diseases in their bones, eye and ear issues, including deafness and heart and blood problems. The Yorkshire Terrier can be prone to something called patella luxation, where the three parts of their leg is not properly lined up, which can cause lameness in the dog. Eye disorders, blood disorders, hyperglycemia, breathing problems and eye and mouth problems. As I said before, your pup may not end up suffering with these issues, but it's very important to be aware of what they could be prone to. Both the Yorkie and Havanese are intelligent dogs and so well trainable. You do need to set boundaries with your Yorkie as their independence can get the better of them and their big dog mentality can kick in causing them to try and be the boss of their house. This requires lots of consistent training to show them that you are the leader of the pack. Yorkies can be very vocal dogs and so you need to start training early on to prevent this developing into a bad habit that could cause problems for you and your neighbours. Yorkshire Terriers are known for being difficult to house train but with patience and consistency, it can be achieved. The Havanese dog is eager to please their owner, which makes them relatively easy to train. Taking your Havanese puppy to training classes is especially helpful with this breed in order to turn training into a fun activity for them and beginning socialisation at a young age to reduce their anxiety levels. Both the Yorkshire Terrier and the Havanese are remarkable little pups with strong characters. Finding the right breed for you takes time and lots of research, so be sure to keep looking into your desired breed before making a final decision. So I really hope that you enjoyed today's video and that you found it helpful. If you did, please hit that like button and to make sure that you never miss a future video about our four-legged best friends, hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. I can't wait to speak to you all again soon on the Fenrir Yorkshire Terrier Show.